So let's move on. We're going to use several different properties in each of these problems. And I'll first start by just rewriting our expression, and then we'll decide what to do from there. This one's going to be a little bit more involved. So this will be 2 to the minus 3t cubed plus 5t. And notice that we have an exponential expression where we're adding exponents. So this is like one of the rules that was written above, where if you have a sum in your exponents, you can rewrite it as a product of two different exponential expressions with the same base. So let's apply that here. And just so that we have it as a guideline, if we have a sum of our exponents, we rewrite it as a raised to that first term in the sum, so b times by a raised to the second term in the sum. So for us, we have 2 to the first term in the sum, so that's minus 3t to the third, and multiplied by 2 to the 5t power. And from here, since we have multiplication in our exponents, another rule that we wrote above is that if we have a to the b times c, that when we have multiplication in our exponents, we can rewrite it as an exponent to an exponent. So this could be rewritten as a to the b all raised to the c power. Or if you want, you could even reverse this. This is a to the c all raised to the b power. Since when you have an exponent to an exponent, you multiply. So let's rewrite each of these, where instead of having multiplication, you have an exponent to an exponent. So for this first one, let's raise 2 to the numerical power, the minus 3. So this is 2 to the minus 3 power, and then all raised to the t cubed power. And the second one, we'll raise 2 to the fifth power. So this would be 2 to the fifth power, all raised to the t power. And the reason I wrote 2 raised to each of these numerical powers rather than the variable powers is that we can actually simplify these since they're numbers. 2 to the minus 3 just means divide by 2 three times. So this would be 1 over 2 cubed or 1 over 8 all raised to the t cubed power. And this will be 32 raised to the t power. And you could keep simplifying further. For instance, we have a quotient, so this exponent will go to both of these. And so essentially you would have 8 in the denominator. So we could write 30 2, excuse me, let me rewrite that, raised to the t power over 8 raised to the t cubed power. And again, there are many ways to rewrite these exponential expressions. So a lot of times in these problems, you're kind of playing around with it to see what you can do. And then we're going to use the answers to guide us. So notice this first one, we have 8 to the t cubed. But we know that our 8 to the t cubed must be in the denominator. And that essentially has to do with the fact that this is a negative exponent here. We have minus 3t cubed. If this was positive, then at least the numerator here would be correct. But the 8 to the t cubed should be in the denominator. And in fact, the 32 to the t power, since that was a positive exponent that was positive 5t, that must be in the numerator. So we know for sure the first one is not right. And if you look at the second one, you can see this one's not going to be correct either. First of all, because we have 2 to the third power, the positive 3, all raised to the t cubed power. But we know 2 must be raised to the negative 3 power when it's in the numerator. And likewise, in the denominator here, we have 2 to the 5t, but 2 to the 5t is in the numerator. So that's not correct either. That would have to be 1, 1 over this term. And lastly, we have 8 to the t cubed, but again, that needs to be in the denominator. The 32 to the t, that actually is correct there. That should be in the numerator. But this first factor here, this 8 to the t cubed, that's incorrect. So we ended up with another example where none of them were correct. So let's move on. We'll do several more examples. And for each of these, I recommend just rewriting it and then asking yourself what you can do and trying to play around with it a little bit. So we have 64 to the m over 4 to the 2m. And to guide how you manipulate this, I encourage you to take a look at the answers and see what the possible choices are. 
So one of them is to rewrite everything with a base of four. So we could ask ourselves, what, what power would we raise four to to get 64? And we know that four to the third power is 64. So we could rewrite this as four to the third, all raised to the m power, and then divided by four to the two m. So a power raised to a power, we multiply. So we can rewrite this as four to the three m divided by four to the two m. Now, a rule we haven't used yet for this exercise or in these videos is that if we have a quotient, let's say we have a to the b, and we're dividing by a to the c, that when you have a quotient where the base is the same, you subtract the exponents. So this would be a to the b minus c. This is very similar to where you have a product and you add the exponents. In fact, you could rewrite this denominator expression as a to the minus c and put it in the numerator, and then you could apply that product rule where they have the same base and you add the exponents, it's just you would be adding negative c there. So we'll apply this rule here. They have the same base, so we can just subtract the exponents. This will be four to the three m minus two m, and three m minus two m is just m. So this first, or this bottom one here, this actually is correct. That's equivalent to that. And we can rewrite this further since four we know is really just two squared. So this is two to the second power raised to the m, and since we have an exponent to an exponent, we can multiply the exponents, and this is two to the two m power. So the middle one is correct as well. Now for this third one, there's two different approaches, since we didn't come up with anything with the base of 16 in our work. One is to recognize that we can write 14 as a power of 16. Or we can say that 4 squared, let me use a different color for these, we can say that 4 to the second power is 16. Or if we raise both sides to the 1 half power, so 4 squared to the 1 half is 16 to the 1 half power. And then simplifying the left hand side, we have an exponent to an exponent, so we multiply, and 2 times a half is just 1 and we have that four is really 16 to the one half power. So we can make a substitution here, since we know that our expression does simplify to four to the m, and so rewriting that four to the m, we can use this idea that four is really 16 to the one half power. So we have 16 to the one half, all raised to the m, and when we have an exponent to an exponent, we multiply. So this is 16 to the 1 half, or I'll just use 0 0.5 since that's what they use, times m. So it does look like this first one actually is correct as well. Now I mentioned there was a second approach that we could use. We could actually start with the answer and see if we can manipulate it so that it ends up with one of the expressions that we found. So 16 to the 0 0.5m, since we have a product in the exponents, we know that that's really just an exponent to an exponent. So this is 16 to the 0.5, all raised to the m. And 16 to the 0.5, or 16 to the 1 half, is really just the square root of 16, all raised to the m, if we look at it in radical notation. And of course, the square root of 16 is 4, so this does become 4 to the m power, which we know is an equivalent expression. So two ways to do this, you can either start with what you're given, or you can start with the answers and see if you can get back to what you were given. And a lot of times you'll just meet in the middle somewhere. You can start with this, and you can start with this, and then work backwards here, work forwards there, and hopefully you'll be able to connect the two paths to prove that they are the same expression.